dear brothers and sisters in Christ, these two readings from these, this, uh, from the Monday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time, taken together, uh, give us a, a synopsis of the paradox of Christian happiness, which we enjoy even in this life in the midst of suffering and a happiness uh, which is buoyed up in this suffering by the hope of an unmixed happiness that we will enjoy in the next life in the presence of God. The Lord in his Sermon on the Mount, which we hear today, gives us the definition of true happiness that is ordered to eternal life. The Catechism of the Catholic Church gives us a number of paragraphs on the Beatitudes that shed light on the meaning of this teaching. One thing I'd like to bring out is the philosophical point or the philosophical logic of uh, this happiness because it's not simply uh, supernatural, although it is indeed supernatural, but there's an underlying uh, truth that is also of the natural order. Uh, that is that happiness comes from the realization of purpose. That is, all created things are created for a purpose. And the moral good is that which tends toward the fulfillment of our purpose. We as uh, human beings have a nature that we were given by God and it's a nature that is both physical and spiritual. And that we are capable of God, capable of the infinite is an indication that we are made for God and for immortal life with him, eternal happiness. St. Augustine, uh, I'm paraphrasing here because I don't have the quote right in front of me, but he said something to the effect of uh, that we are, we are restless, Lord, until we rest in you. And this is his way of um, indicating what I just said, that, that our purpose is in God, and until we rest in God, we can't be truly happy because we're not fulfilled yet. And so the Beatitudes give us a number of indications uh, for, or signposts as it were, pointing us to that Beatitude which, for which we're made. And I say it's paradoxical because on the surface and in a certain way, each of these uh, indications for happiness involve something that in this life and in this world are shunned values, we could say, or are considered not um, goods but evils. For instance, poverty. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The world disdains poverty, but our Lord came in poverty. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mourning, sorrow, suffering. Our nature tends to turn away from these things, and the world certainly uh, sees no value in them. 
especially in our day and age, which is hedonistic, all ordered to pleasure. And yet, the Lord suffered for our sake so that we could be with him uh, free from sin. He freed us from sin through his suffering, and through his sacrifice. And so in this life, he says, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And our mourning, our suffering, gains meaning and value when we unite it with that of Christ. Christ, who is our life and our truth and the way. St. Paul, in the first reading, talks about the encouragement uh, that is proper to the Christian disciple. For as Christ's sufferings overflow to us, so through Christ does our encouragement also overflow. And that's because the Christian uh, truth is that these things are passing. Our suffering is a participation in the suffering and passion and death of Christ who then rose again in glory and so, as we follow Christ, we will encounter uh, the cross, but that is a condition in this life, which leads then to beatitude, which only makes sense uh, in the end if it's eternal, and it is, and that's the source of our hope, the hope which allows us to face uh, life in a fallen world with courage because we know uh, Christ already has won and in him we too will en enjoy this victory if we're only faithful. So God, God created us for happiness and that's the deepest and, and most constant desire in every heart. There isn't a person on the face of this earth, as St. Augustine affirms, who doesn't yearn for happiness. It's a universal law, and it's a sign of the, the nature that God has given us and that we're made for him. And even though because of the freedom he gave us so that we might participate in his love, uh, we are also susceptible to abuse of that freedom, which is then sin. Despite this possibility and the suffering that arises from it, we still have hope and we still can achieve our uh, purpose if we follow Christ who showed us the way. Let us give thanks that we, uh, in the midst of a world that suffers greatly, see through the illusion uh, of those falsehoods that say that uh, we should seek pleasure rather than righteousness because pleasure may distract us for a moment, but it too passes, whereas the joy that Christ promises us never will pass if we only face that suffering uh, and the cross with him. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, cause of our joy and mother of our Savior, unite us uh, through her immaculate heart to the sacred heart of Jesus who has assured us of beatitude. Praise be Jesus and Mary.